Chiricahua Apache sculptor Alan Hauser wanted to draw attention to centuries-old values. Storyteller tradition is, uh, is in every aspect of Native America. And he used, he used sculpture to, to, to speak instead of words. Alan seemed like he, he always wanted to be an artist. He was born in a very modest environment in West Central Oklahoma, and he taught himself to draw. And uh, I asked him one time if he had any of these early drawings that he has done as a child. And he said, no, they've all uh, gone away. He said, they were just kid, kid drawings anyway. He was born with the muse, you know. He, he was born with this need to create and uh, record things. He always talked about his people because he had a place on this earth. And it wasn't in uh, Oklahoma. It wasn't in any specific place. It was more like a relationship to nature. So he was always talking about where he was like our, our tribes from, from New Mexico and Arizona and Mexico. But he also talked about Navajos and uh, Pueblos and other tribes because he realized that there was a relationship that we shared. He was just like this encyclopedia of, of not only his own experiences, but my grandfather's. And my grandfather's the same with his grandfather's. And that was a continuing cultural dialogue that Alan somehow brought in other tribes. He never spoke from a Western point of view. He uh, always brought in that cultural narrative. Homeward Bound is exemplary of a whole series of works he did portraying the Navajo lifestyle. He, of course, was in Apache. Uh, his wife, Ana Marie Gallegos Hauser, was uh, part Navajo. I think he saw the dignity and he had a great deal of respect for what people would think of as a, as a simple lifestyle, but in fact, one that was very complex in the relationships between the family, very complex between the relationships with the earth and the animals. The one quality that, that exists in all of his work, whether it's from his early work uh, as a student to, to the mature work of late in his career, is dignity. Uh, he portrayed the, the dignity of, of the people that, that he was representing and, and their, their lifestyles. He was commissioned to do a sculpture in 1947 by the Interior Department. They were looking for an Indian sculptor to do a memorial for the soldiers who had died in World War II, the Native American soldiers. And Alan was chosen based on his murals. He convinced them when they contacted him that he was an experienced sculptor, when in fact he'd only done a few little wood carvings. He continued to paint uh, through the 1950s. He took a teaching job in Utah, and really painting and drawing remained his principal uh, mediums uh, through the 1960s. So the, the commission, it was really an anomaly. It wasn't until he came to Santa Fe to teach in 1962 that they asked him if he would be the sculpture instructor at the Institute of American Indian Arts. And that's really where he started to explore 
uh, his own uh, ideas and evolved his own ideas and had so much tremendous influence as a sculptor. Prayer was one of the last sculptural works that Alan Hauser did. Personal reverence was a theme throughout his entire career, in his, in his paintings, in his drawings, and in his sculptural work. Another very well-known piece is one titled Offering uh, of the Sacred Pipe, which uh, is at the U.S. Mission to the United Nations in, in New York and all of the dignitaries from throughout the world pass by this as Alan's wish for mutual respect and dignity and, and peace in the world. I think that uh, he had a gift. Somebody told me it was a knack. He had uh, the ability to do things and he put his whole life into his artwork. So when I look around, I don't remember names, I don't remember times, I'm, I'm, I'm not a historian, but I see these things as, uh, as kind of like friends. That are, you know, you forget people's friends, names and all that stuff, but you know their face immediately. Alan's work does that to me, it makes me smile, it makes me feel good, it makes me touch. There are things about a sculptor that most people don't know, is uh, they don't think with their eyes, they don't think with their minds, sometimes they think with their hands. Alan was able to breathe life into pieces through the proportion and through the surfaces that, uh, that no other artist I've known has been able to do. Art was his way of communicating the human condition. Alan was a person who truly believed in the goodness of, of his fellow man and used the narrative of his work to talk about his own people, to talk about all Native people, and to talk about mankind. He believed in dignity, he believed in mutual respect, and his work sought to portray that.